Hey, this is James. This is Mike. And we're going to do a commentary on uh, the Back to the Future re-revisited episode. Now, re-revisited? Re-revisited? What's all that about? Well, um, originally uh, we kind of had this idea of going back to some of the old videos and sort of like, uh, you know, completing more of the, the games, more of the things that we didn't feel like we really finished or like, you know, other things that we didn't say about the games that we should have said. Um, so I, I thought the video would just be called Nintendo Days Re-Revisited. And it is kind of like a parody of uh, the Metallica album Garage Days Re-Revisited. Um, there was a Revisited before as if they were like revisiting their Garage Days and then they're Re-Revisiting it again. So I felt that the nerd episodes themselves is me revisiting my Nintendo days. From, from your youth. From my youth, yeah. And then revisiting the nerd episodes is re-revisiting. So that's right. how I got all that. <laughs> And, uh, did that make any sense at all? It did. And in that part you just show where I got my head blown off as Jason Voorhees, that's a big um, parody of what George Lucas did, because George Lucas has certainly been re-revisiting his material. They just came out with the Star Wars Blu-ray, <laughs> where uh, they added in all kinds of fucking bullshit. <laughs> like, uh, they got Ewoks blinking now, apparently, and, and like all kinds of stuff. Supposedly people Darth Vader says about. no during the... the yeah, oh yeah, when, when the Emperor throws him off into the hole, apparently now. I haven't actually seen it. I, you know, it's a little early, to tell you the truth. Neither one of us has seen it, so we probably shouldn't even be talking about this, but uh, it's funny just because I think he's doing it on purpose just to piss people off now. Yeah, <laughs> and apparently I heard uh, that Steven Spielberg actually is uh, like regrets doing uh, like the what he did to E.T. and he's gonna actually re-release E.T. Really? E. again, um, the movie um, with the original effects, like the way it's supposed to be. Uh huh. So and anyhow. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, what we're looking at right now, it's uh, you know, well, Top Gun. So. One of the things that we decided to do in this one is is do new title cards. Well, it was kind of more of your choice, but you want to talk yeah, about that? Yeah, um, as you saw uh, in that part, James makes fun of the title card where he's got his tongue sticking out. Um, I wanted him to make fun of it because I, I really cannot stand uh, those early title cards. People have said to me that they like uh, the title cards from the early nerd episodes because um, they're kind of crappy, so that kind of makes them funny. Um, but at the same time, like, I know that, like, I can draw a lot better than that. So whenever I see those title cards, I just look at it and I think, oh, God, like, I, I could have done a better job. But I didn't know, like, so many people were going to be watching the videos back then. So I didn't really bother. It was just, like, a quick thing I did just kind of for fun. Um, but this episode, it really is going, you know, all about going back and fixing up, like, what we did before. James is going back and fixing up... Um, you know, the Top Gun video and adding in the parts he missed, like with the space shuttle or with the turtles, adding, uh, you know, the part with the Technodrome. And for me, it was all about going back and getting a chance to fix up the title cards and even do some title cards that I didn't get a chance to do because the fifth episode, Ninja Turtles, is the first one I did a title card for. And I never even got to do a title card for Roger Rabbit, which you see right here on screen. Um, and by the way, I was really happy to be able to do one where I included all those characters. Um, and some of those characters aren't even in uh, the Roger Rabbit movie, but whatever. I just wanted to fit them all in there. Um, anyhow, um, another thing I just wanted to say about the title cards was that after the Rob episode, which was episode uh, 100, um, I kind of felt that like um, I didn't really want to do the title cards anymore, so I'm probably not going to be doing uh, title cards for it because I always thought like, what the heck is the point of me even doing title cards? Because it's like, we could just show, if we needed an image of the game, we could just show the front cover of the game. Like, why do I, you know, why does there have to be a drawing? And those drawings take like, you know, sometimes up to a week to do, and they don't, they're only on screen for two seconds. So really, what's the point of even having them in the videos, I've always felt. So after the Rob episode, I was just like, all right, you know what, enough with that. It, you know, there'll still be nerd episodes, but enough of these title cards, like they don't need to be in there. I didn't even know I'd be doing episodes after 100. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when this started, we did, it was just a thing we were doing for fun, and we didn't really know what was gonna happen, so. Yeah. Like, I mean, there were just things that we just missed about the, the old games that we didn't really like. Because in, in the, the old days when I did these videos, I really didn't do a lot of research. And how did I miss the whole 
1-800 number. Like, why did I never try calling that? Finding out that was a sex hotline and it's in a Nintendo game, you know? And especially missing uh, this this uh, Judge Doom part in the game. That's one of the biggest bullshit things in, like, any Nintendo game. Because this guy is so friggin' hard to beat, which James explains here. Um, so uh, that was left out in the original Roger Rabbit video. Um, and we always felt like, oh man, that's gotta be in there. Um, and another thing is, um, when we were shooting the original Roger Rabbit video, you might remember the line where James says, um, uh, I want to nail Roger Rabbit to the cross. <laughs> I want to nail Roger Rabbit to the fucking cross. Yeah, I want to nail Roger Rabbit to the fucking cross. Well, that came out of um, a whole conversation we had had about um, having a Jesus Christ punching bag or something like so, that. Some, I don't know what so, that was some, about. Some like, but... long, like funny conversation we had. And we had it on tape, but something happened. Um, Maybe well, James didn't have a wire plugged in or something yeah, like that, and, yeah. and we lost all the footage. Yeah, I mean, well, we're on the Ninja Turtles now, but anyway, about Roger Rabbit really quick, just so you know what he's saying, is that we filmed, there was a whole on-screen part with the nerd, like on camera, and uh, we and basically Mike was there when I was filming, and we were just kind of like improvising, and he was like kind of throwing me different lines to say, like, oh, try something like this or try that. And we were just like cracking up and like I was just doing different, uh, saying different things that were just completely ridiculous. And then we realized that I forgot to switch um, the uh, the input for the, the line in for the XLR mic on the camera. And basically uh, it was set to uh, like the wrong input basically and we had no audio, so yeah. we basically lost an entire thing of unscripted material that we could never recreate, because I don't, I don't even remember what I said. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, so we're on to the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles now, and it was great that we were able to go back and um, get to the Technodrome and show that whole part, because that was always like, you know, in, in the original video, you talk about the game up until maybe, um, the fourth level or something, but you don't get to the Technodrome, and then you do the, the whole uh, rant at the end, but you never mention like the end of the game. So it was great that you got to go back and really review this a little bit better than you had originally. So it makes it uh, a little more complete than it was. So yeah. it's, not, it's really nice to, to have done that now. So now it's, it's completed and we never have to uh, go back and look at that again. Yeah. Um, and what else? Well, other than like beating Shredder and or whatever whatever happens at the end. I right. guess it's just Shredder, right? Yeah, it's but. Shredder and like, um, actually you're even showing it right here. You're in, in, inside the Technodrome, yeah. but, um, but then I died. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't beat it. Yeah, it's, it it's a really hard. hard, it's a really hard game. Um, and I, I didn't like give up either. Like I was really, really trying to beat it. And that well, was just far. even if you, even if you had got, get, gotten to Shredder, the only thing there really is to say about Shredder is that there's a trick you can do where you stand in the corner and you can beat him. It's kind of like in Zelda 2 where you can st stand in the corner with Link and just duck and keep hitting him. There's a there's a trick that's like that with Shredder. So that's mm -hmm. probably pretty much the only thing you could have. But good said. luck getting up to Shredder. Yeah, exactly. Because there's yeah. like spa guys in spacesuits on the way, and they're fucking hard to get by. Well, uh, so then basically, Back to the Future here is the main bulk of the video. Um, originally, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I was I was thinking it was going to be just one video called Nintendo Days Re Revisited, and it would just be looking back to the old nerd videos and all that. Uh, and doing all these games in one in one episode, but then it just got too long and it was too much to you know get done in, in, in a month. So it was like I decided to break it up, and uh, so then basically we decided to put Ninja Turtles, Roger Rabbit, and Top Gun uh, in the same video as the Back to the Future one. So it's a little confusing because the video is called Back to the Future Re Revisited, but it's the other games too. And then the other video is, is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde re-revisited, and you know, that yeah. comes next. So we're actually not going to be commentating on that one, but uh, that one speaks for itself pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the titles are a little weird. Um, it was just really hard to figure out what the title of the damn thing, because it talks about so many different things. Yeah. So, I mean, really, the title probably should have been something like, you know, Roger Rabbit, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah. Top Gun, Back yeah, to yeah. the Future. You it's know, like one of those, but like uh, that, the title would have been too damn long. It's so. like one of those like Godzilla titles, you know, like uh, like King Ghidorah, you know. Yeah. Uh, what, what was that one? Fuck, it's escaping me right now. But like uh, the one I, I know says, the one you mean. It's like a really long. 
title. It, uh, it says all, all these monster There was a nerd over. episode that had a really long title. It was uh, the angry video game nerd is chronologically confused about bad movie and video game sequel titles. Oh, yeah. So we could have done a uh, sort of a play on that and made a really long... Uh... Actually, James has an idea for a movie he's always told me about that, that he wants... That, he, oh, that, that has that like one, a really yeah. long title. Oh, the confounded crazy critters who stopped living and became... Wait, wait, no, no, fuck, I, I, I started saying the other title. God damn it, it's like, we don't rehearse these things, I, I just fuck <laughs> up. The confounded crazy critters who devoured neurotic livestock... <laughs> the confounded crazy critters who devoured neurotic livestock and couldn't stop dying so they had to carry their own tombstones over their heads. Yeah. That's the title. So maybe, they're, they're maybe actually, we could have done something like that with the title. <laughs> what I almost said there, there, there actually is a movie called The Incredibly Strange Creatures Who... Um, stopped living and became mixed up zombies. That's a real movie, though. It is, yeah, yeah that's a real movie. Um, uh, anyway, what the hell are we talking about? Oh, yeah, the, the videos. Another another concern we had was that I, we, didn't, we didn't want people to think that, you know, we're, like, running out of ideas. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I've reviewed all these games, and now it's like I'm, I'm out of ideas, so I'm doing the same ones over again. So I didn't want this to be broken up into too many separate videos because I felt like eventually people would get, you know, like, tired of it. Right. I mean, James, I think he even said that in the video. Uh, I did, yeah. Like, you have a basement full of games, but, you know, as we said, you know, we just wanted to really go back and complete the, those ones because we always didn't feel quite satisfied with how the original uh, videos were. Things were left out, that's all. So I'm sure we, we're not going to go back and redo any other ones, just some of those early ones. Like, you're probably not gonna, like, if you miss something in Metal Gear, I don't think you're gonna make a whole no. video about Metal Gear, you know, just because you might have missed something. Pretty much the cutoff year is, like, 2007. I think that's when I really started, like, putting all my effort into these videos, because that's when I actually started getting, like, paid to do them and everything. Right. Um, well, in I the early had... days, I remember uh, I would come over James's place and we would just uh, play some of these games, but honestly, like, like the Top Gun game, like we, we played that for like ten minutes or something, <laughs> and like the t the Turtles game, we didn't play for th that long, I don't think. Um, and some of those games, like we didn't really play them for for all that long. Whereas now, we put a lot more effort into it. Like we'll sit there for a, a day or, yeah. or long, or sometimes longer. <laughs> I remember, actually, I gotta say. Uh, the most impressive thing, like a lot of times people say that James sucks at games because he always dies and stuff like that. You know, that's not really true. Um, James has beaten some really hard video games. He's beaten um, Street Fighter 2010 oh God. and Transformers for the Famicom. But I think that James's biggest accomplishment from what I've seen from witnessing him make the nerd episodes is... He did those Zelda CDI games, and oh. I I played uh, I played them for maybe a minute or two. But James actually went through and beat all three of those well, games, except the third one. The third one I just I, I got stuck. Okay. But yeah, but but the other well, two. Well, still though, I just think it's a huge accomplishment yeah. to have beaten those games because the for, for one thing, the controller is just like. Yeah. It's, it's like you can't even use that damn controller. <laughs> so I think that's the craziest accomplishment. Yeah, but anyway, speaking about uh, this game right here, uh, Back to the Future 2 and 3 on Nintendo, this one was one that we only played for like 10 minutes. Because mm -hmm. this, this, basically, the, the original Back to the Future review, it was just like, it was meant to just be the first Back to the Future game, and we didn't even know that there were like sequels. Or actually, well, no, I did. I actually did remember renting this as a, as a child one time. But, but basically, the point was that we didn't really plan to do the sequels on top of that it was kind of like an extra bonus at the end of the video and i didn't even like bother to like really play this much and figure out how it's played but once i actually started playing it like for real and figuring out like what you're supposed to do it is ridiculous like it is like one of the most complicated and like unnecessarily complicated and just annoying nintendo games like in the whole Catalog. Actually, tell you the truth, when we did go back and play this again for this video, we still couldn't really figure it out. We I couldn't. Mean, we couldn't get too far because it's impossible. So, so honestly, like we didn't, we st we didn't go through and we didn't beat it or anything. But I don't think we could. Like we just couldn't do it. It's just yeah. such a ridiculously complicated, fucked up game. Like the stuff this game asks you to do is just unreasonable. Like, okay, like, you have to, well, I explain it in the video, it speaks for itself, but yeah. it's like you gotta return those objects and do those word scramblers and find all those hidden rooms, and 
Now I heard that, um, is this true or not, that Bob Gale, the creator of Back to the Future, has seen the first Back to the Future video? Like, where did that come from? Uh, is, is that is, there, is that true or what? Yeah, um, actually, well, I, online, I think, in an interview, he actually cited the Back to the Future review because he agrees himself, like, those games were terrible. Right. Because he had nothing to do with it. Um, so that's why he, but, I guess, wanted to go back and make his own game, which is what Back to the, the, new, the new Back to the Future games are. Kind of, yes. he's involved I guess, in those, right? In a way, he's sort of re-revisiting something, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> like, um, it, it was nice to actually see a Back to the Future game with, like, him, you know, being a consultant and, you know, the, the writing and the, you know, doing the whole, like, like, it definitely, it feels like a fourth movie, unlike these games, which have nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with like, the movie. Like, LJN, like, didn't even, like, show him the game until, like, they were, like, done with it, and then they didn't want to change anything. Yeah, it. like, with the first game, it's just, like, you have a guy going down the road, and it just, it could be any kind of game. It's just a guy going down the road, and he's avoiding, like, benches and stuff. Like, how is that Back to the Future? Like, the game could just be called Joe Goes Down the Road. It doesn't have to be called Back to the Future. They just slap the name Back to the Future on it, just so kids would buy it. It's friggin' bullshit. It is. <laughs> and, and, and like, oh, it's so funny with the first game not even having the music, but like, people have said that the, uh, the music you hear in the first game is actually like Power of Love, but it's sped up really fast. I don't hear it, like, whatsoever. But, uh, but I've, I've heard different, like, interpretations. Some people have, have like... Actually, somebody sent me a really funny uh, collage they did of, like, the, the, the music from the real Power Love song and from the music in the game. And they combined it together, and they actually made it fit. And it was so funny. Like, I think they, like, they slowed down the song in the game or something, but, but they, like... It still sounds nothing like it, but they at least made it seem like it was, like... You know, like they combined the two songs, and it was really funny. Uh, first, the, the LJ and Rainbow. That part's funny. Uh, the, the, for a second, it showed a clip of the controller, and it had a sticker on the controller. I know sometimes people ask, like, about that sticker. What is that sticker on the controller from that that you always use? Oh, that, like, blue one? It's got, like, I think it's, like, pink, actually. Oh, the pink one. There's, a, there's like, a blue one with, like, a face, and then there's a pink one. They were both from Nintendo Power. Like, there was just, like, a... They had one of those pages that was all like, like sticker paper or something like that. Yeah, and not only did they have those, but they had a Game Boy one where you put it on the face of your Game Boy, like basically on the, you know, on the the outside of the, the screen. Wasn't there also that Star Fox thing? That was different. Yeah, there was an issue that had a Star Fox thing where like you you can make a Star Fox plane out of like you know it's like cardboard. And, uh, and you did that for the Nintendo Power thing, right? Didn't you actually cut it out and make it or something? I, I honestly don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, but anyway, this is this is Back to Future Three. This game is just like insane. Oh, and in case you don't know, like basically, like what what we're talking about is that like Mike helps a lot on when we're playing these games. Like we actually like play them together a lot of times. Right. And like you know, Mike will help me come up with ideas or like help me try to beat some of these. Right. If you've this seen one, the making of episode, you probably know that. Yeah. And and this one, I actually could not beat the first level. Like, no joke. So I gave it to Mike and said, "Here." I couldn't do it either. Yeah, and I was like, G "Give this a try." And like he couldn't do it. So actually, didn't you have some friends over one time and they were playing it and couldn't I do it either? <laughs> I let I let about five people play this game and try to try to beat this first level and. Nobody can do it's it. It's the same story with everybody. Everybody who tries this this level, it's just like, the objects come up too fucking quick, and like you can't see you like the, like a bird will come. You try to duck, and then it's just yeah, it's fucking terrible. And, and everybody who tried it reacted the same exact way. They would get really frustrated, and then you can't even get them to turn the game off because everybody is like, "I'm gonna fucking beat this." Like, right. like everybody has like everybody takes it personal with this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. You know what really bothers me when I watch this is how low my head is in the frame. Like there's so much space above my head. Like little things like that that nobody else thinks about just bother the fuck out of me when I watch these things. <laughs> it's hard when you're shooting by yourself because it's usually just me. I set up the camera and yeah, I got my little LCD screen. Sometimes I actually plug it into that TV that you're seeing there so I can actually see myself on the TV, so I can make sure that the frame is exactly how I want it. Oh yeah, then there's this game. 
the, the Famicom one, which I never knew about till recently. Um, How did you find out about that? Um, I, it was a donation. Um, oh, somebody donated it. Okay. Uh, so basically, yeah, it's it's just amazing that there actually existed a, a pretty good, a, you know, a decent Back to the Future game then. But wh why would that be the one that never came out in you know North America? Because we were we got stuck with the shitty versions. Yeah. T to be clear, I don't know if it came out anywhere else other than Japan, but yeah, I mean it might have come out in like the United Kingdom or something. Like who knows? Maybe like, we wouldn't know because we didn't grow yeah. up there. Yeah, but I know it didn't it didn't come out in the United States. I know that. Yeah, which is a shame. Look at this. I mean, <clears throat> it looks freaking awesome. It is. It's a fun. It's a fun like, little side scroller. It's nothing special, but it it looks like Back to the Future. It actually follows the scenes in the second movie. I wonder and if like Michael it's Jay actual Fox ever shit. This game. <laughs> yeah, it's actual shit in a Nintendo game. I always thought that, like Super with games Nintendo. like Mike Tyson's Punch Out, like did Mike Tyson ever play like the Mike His Tyson game? game? Yeah, and did did did, uh, did Michael J. Fox ever play like the Back to the Future game, like back in the day from the Nintendo game? <laughs> you know, I always wondered that with those type of games. Did Michael Keaton ever play the Batman? Yeah. Game? <laughs> probably not. I, I bet they did. Probably, like you know. Sometimes it, it happens. Right. Sometimes I think like they'll do it as like a Nintendo Power like publicity stunt or something. Right. So. Actually, in the first issue of Nintendo Power, I think like there's a part where there's like an interview with like Pee Wee Herman or something like that, and then they have like interviews with like like different different people who were in games. Actually, Pee Wee Herman wasn't in, in a game. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> what happened to you? Uh, one time you had a you had a funny you story. Know, you know what? Actually, I think this video is about to end oh, really soon. To tell you the truth. Okay. So I don't know if I have time for that, but uh, um, but what else about this video? Anything you want to say before it ends? Yeah, um, I know that uh, uh, at the end it shows a title card and it has Doc go. Dr. Jekyll's uh, face on it with a question mark. Um, we kind of explained what that was all about is we were going to include Dr. Jekyll uh, and Mr. Hyde like in this video, but then decided there was too much to say about it. Yeah. So that's why that's like that. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I would suggest, uh, out, of, out of the whole year of 2010, I think the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde video was my favorite. So I say, just watch that one. No commentary needed. Just watch the, the Jekyll and Hyde video. That's my favorite one. Um, you know. That's definitely uh, of, a good video. Of all of them, that would be my favorite. So, yeah. Well, that's it. You're just staring at a, blank, uh, at a black screen right now. <laughs>